Well, today I'm going to uh, use my lathe to make my wife a uh, pencil holder, a little cup, I guess, to hold her pens and pencils on her desk at work. Um, something she asked for. I would made a bandsaw box uh, and I posted the video of that uh, a few days ago and she wanted a pencil box to match so what I did is I glued up some uh, alder and some maple uh, put some uh, vertical maple uh, stripes in the piece and then I'm going to turn that into a uh, basically a, a tall cup that'll have the maple stripes in it and then hollow in the center. Uh, I'm going to do this on my lathe. I always wear some safety equipment when I work on my lathe. Two of the primary ones I use are the face shields. Uh, you know, that lathe is spinning usually at 2000 RPM or higher and sometimes pieces fly off and um, I can tell you <laughs> from experience they hurt when they hit you in the face and uh, even though I always wear glasses when I'm working uh, I've been hit a few times so for the last year or two I've been wearing this face shield whenever I do anything on the lathe. Um, a little cumbersome to do use this on other tools kind of gets in my way but works great on the lathe. Um, I always wear a smock that zips up all the way because those little pieces of sawdust and those little chips of wood will go right down whatever you're wearing and you'll get it inside your clothes and you know I've had it in my <laughs> underwear I mean it gets everywhere so uh, I always wear a smock uh, to do that and you want to make sure you don't have anything loose um, short sleeve smock you don't really want sleeves around the lathe um, so I'm not an expert at working with a lathe, but um, I can tell you those are the things that I would recommend uh, just as a beginner, you know, for anybody working on a lathe. I do sometimes, depending on what wood I'm working with, um, wear even a, a face mask, but I'm not as good about doing that as most people tell me I should. Um, a lot of people say you should not do woodworking at all without wearing a, a face mask just because of you breathing that stuff in. So, um, and then I usually use dust collection. I'm not going to use it today when I'm uh, making this video just because I want to, um, it adds quite a bit of background noise and I want to be able to talk while I'm doing it. So today I'm going to make this uh, pencil holder for my wife. So, okay, I'm um, roughing this in. This is going to be a pencil pen holder for my wife's desk at work. Uh, she actually requested this. Um, so I uh, glued up some alder and maple. Um, so it's got some stripes going down it, so it'll be a cup kind of uh, looking thing with some stripes running horizontally or I guess that's vertically uh, through it. So I'm using my roughing gouge to basically take the corners off and make it round and then I'll go to my uh, carbide cutters and actually use those to form it. So I started out at 500 to just kind of get the corners off and now I'm sitting at 900 RPM um, goes a little smoother. I'll probably bump it up to about 1200 here pretty quick.
Going up to 1200 now. So there's a few ways to tell if it's round or not. One is you can hear it when you're using your gouge. You can tell it's not a solid sound. It's uh, obviously got some high points that are clicking through there. You can also, if you look at the uh, top of it, looking across the top, if it's got a little wobble to it or it's not quite round, the edge won't be really well defined. It'll be kind of a little blurry. And um, so you can kind of tell. Also a good way to tell if you cut it evenly is to look at the back edge uh, and see how that looks. Uh, the third method is to kind of lay your gouge on here. And if it jumps around like that, that means it's still got some edges on it. If it sits there smooth, then you've got it round. One thing I wouldn't do is put your hand on it. The reason is, depending on the wood, there might be splinters and uh, that could be nasty, turning at 1200 RPM to get a splinter in your hand. So I would always shut it off and, uh, and check it this way. And you can see there's still a flat spot here. That's it. So it's almost, it's almost round. So I actually am going to go ahead and switch to my uh, to my uh, square carbide here, and I'm going to finish roughing it in with that. Almost there. I'm going to actually put on a pair of gloves. This, um, these pieces chipping off are hitting me in the hand, and the faster you go, the more they hurt and they hit. It's not terrible, but it's more comfortable to have a glove on to, to do this. I usually wear gloves when I'm roughing in anyway, just because those chips that are flying. Same reason I wear a face shield when I'm roughing in. trick with these uh, cutters, these carbide cutters, is they've got square shafts and you want to make sure that the shaft is square on your tool rest and that the tool is held at a 90 degree angle to the, uh, uh, to the work piece. I've got this a little bit high so I'm going to drop this down just a, just a tad. There we go. Since it's roughed in now, I moved the tool rest in a little bit, uh, lowered it a little bit, and again, try to keep this parallel to the floor. Um, I always like to hold it at the very end uh, to give you leverage. This front hand is really just to guide it. There's really not a whole lot of pressure going on in the front. It's more to, to guide the tool where you want it.
So I'm starting to add some kind of beading here to see how it looks. And I kind of like it. Kind of like it. So um, I've purposely got my dust collection off. Um, so it's not quite as noisy. It doesn't do a whole lot anyway because a lot of the sawdust, as you can see, comes out the front. But So this is the considered the detail tool. It's basically got a uh, triangular or pointed end to it. Uh, you can use it to make uh, fine details, troughs in the uh, in the wood, or to help you know round off your beads a little bit. Just you've got to use some finesse with it. You can just use the tip to get in and. Uh, clean up things that you want. It's actually kind of a versatile tool if you learn how to use it. Um, I'm not an expert at this by any means. I like to do is I like to start designing while the piece is still oversized. That way if I don't like it I still have some uh, <laughs> some material left I can take it back down and uh, start over if need be.